Hey, Dr. Osborne here today, and I want to give a warning to all of you that have diabetes. Why? Because one of the top drugs prescribed for this condition is something called metformin. Now, metformin is a great drug, and it lowers blood pressure extremely well. So it will reduce your blood sugar. But the problem with it, the longer you're on it, it has this potential to create major problems. One of the big problems that it can create is a loss of nutrition, a loss of nutrients. Now there are three nutrients that metformin will affect over long periods of use. These three right here, CoQ10, folate, and vitamin B12. Now why is that important? The whole intention of using metformin to lower blood sugar is to reduce your risk of developing diabetic complications, but also to reduce your risk of heart disease, stroke, heart disease, heart attack, etc. That's why doctors use it, because long-term use can reduce your risk by lowering your blood sugar. But long-term use also creates these three nutritional deficiencies. Now, CoQ10 deficiency, meaning when CoQ10 is too low, can actually cause congestive heart failure. I know it doesn't seem like that could possibly be true, but research studies have shown that CoQ10 deficits lead to congestive heart failure, but also CoQ10 deficiency can increase your blood pressure. So again, if the goal or if the recommendation for this medication is to reduce your risk of complications and heart disease, but the long-term use leads to CoQ10 deficiency, creating the increased risk for congestive heart failure and high blood pressure, you can see how you might start chasing your tail. Now, if you're using this medication, you definitely want to talk to your doctor about prescribing CoQ10 as well. You can also buy it over the counter. My advice in that regard is you should be somewhere between two and 300 milligrams of daily use as long as you're taking metformin um, in order to offset that mechanism of deficiency. So you need to take it if you're taking metformin for any great length of time if you want to try to avoid that CoQ10 deficiency. Now that's not all. Let's keep talking a little bit about CoQ10 in this regard because what also happens to many diabetics over time is they develop muscle pains and muscle weakness. And this is a side effect of CoQ10 deficiency as well because your muscles use CoQ10 to generate and drive energy. So loss of CoQ10 levels in muscles can actually start to create damage in the muscles. This is a very well-known side effect uh, of metformin and there have been a number of, of publications on this very mechanism. So if you're on a diabetic medication for a long period of time, you start to develop muscle pain and weakness. One of the, the side effects or consequences to that is reduced movement, right? Lack of motion or movement because you hurt. When you have pain, when you have weakness, you generally tend to want to exercise less, move less to avoid having pain. Now the problem with that is again, as we're talking about a disease of high blood sugar and one of the major ways to treat it naturally, to actually address it naturally is through exercise. And if you're not capable of exercising because you've developed muscle pain and weakness and so now you're kind of holding back, this is just again another reason why taking this medication you want to be very, very aware of this potential problem. Now CoQ10 deficiency can also contribute to another problem which is very common in diabetics and that is a neuropathy, numbness and tingling of the hands of the feet. If you develop a neuropathy and you've been on metformin for long periods of time, one of the first things the doctor is going to say is this is a diabetic neuropathy. You're, you're developing nerve damage because your blood sugars are damaging your nerves. But in reality, in my experience, I've seen a lot of cases where people didn't have a diabetic neuropathy per se. They actually had a drug-induced nutritional deficiency neuropathy. Now, it's important to also understand we're talking about CoQ10 here, but folate deficiency, and folate, by the way, is vitamin B9, 
and vitamin B12 deficiency can also cause neuropathy. So again, we're looking at a medicine that has a side effect uh, that can contribute to neuropathy through three different nutritional deficiencies. So if you're taking metformin and you've started to develop neuropathy, it's very important that you understand this because number one, you can ask your doctor to measure your CoQ10, your B12, and your folate levels to ensure that they're adequate. And you can have your doctor monitor the levels of these nutrients as you're being put on this medication to ensure that you don't develop the plethora of symptoms associated with these nutritional deficiencies. Again, muscle pain and weakness, uh, leading to reduction in mo mobility and movement. Neuropathy is another symptom. Another very big one is severe fatigue. Um, and again, how much are you going to be pushed or motivated to exercise when you're living a life of chronic fatigue, muscle pains, muscle aches, potentially neuropathy? And this is one of the, again, one of the vicious cycles that diabetics get trapped in with this particular type of medication. So can you prevent these symptoms? Can you prevent these problems? Yes, you can. You can do that with some good old-fashioned nutritional supplementation. Of course, you should be eating foods that are rich in these nutrients as well if you're taking metformin, but a lot of times the mechanism of the drug is so strong that it will override the, the doses that you could get from food. So getting more through supplementation can be very, very beneficial. Now, how much folate? You know. Approximately 800 micrograms a day, and in, with B12, anywhere from two to 5,000 would be very beneficial, very helpful in this type of situation, and that's micrograms, and this is, both of these are per day. Um, uh, that's what, so that's what you're looking for, 800 with folate and then 2,000 to 5,000 with vitamin B12, maybe more. Again, the key here is ask your doctor to measure your levels. It's important to understand to measure levels accurately, you want to look at intracellular testing. Most doctors will go straight to measuring serum and we want to try to avoid serum testing because of the inaccuracies that it can present with. So intracellular would be the best way to look at whether or not you have adequate quantities of these nutrients if you have been prescribed metformin. So go have that conversation with your doctor. Hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, make sure you hit that like button, but also hit that subscribe button and come visit me every Tuesday and every Thursday for live shows. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.